Hi, hi everyone. This is a really familiar sort of a, a meeting. So this is really, really great. So uh, for the benefit of, um, of people who will see the recording, I will be more formal, but I'm really, really happy to, to see you all. So I will start without further ado. So good morning, shalom everyone. Um, I'm Alona, faculty member at Levinsky College of Education and head of the international office and also a member of the program committee of this conference. Thank you everyone for joining us. I hope we have uh, many uh, visitors and people that are not part of this project and we will also have a recording so we can also distribute that. Uh, the importance of Metal Conference is even more fundamental this year following a full academic year of online teaching and learning due to COVID-19. So our session is of utmost importance since much of the research points to difficulties, not to say exclusion of marginalized populations when moving to distance learning. So in the former Metal 2020 conference, we presented research results of surveys in Israel regarding difficulties of marginalized populations on which we based our course design. We, participants of the Lab Distance Project, claim just the opposite, that online distance modes of teaching and learning may serve as means and as a lever for inclusion and accessibility of these populations. For example, ethnic or religious minorities, students with special needs, those who live in rural areas or from low socioeconomic backgrounds. So you may wonder how this is done. Well, that's what we're here for. So do we love distance learning? We present to you post-COVID-19 insights on distance learning of marginalized populations. So first, the coordinators of this wonderful project at the Institute Polytechnic of Porto will present an overview a view of the project, the aims, the scope, stages, and importance of this project, especially in times of COVID-19 and emergence of online learning. So please, without further ado, I invite Angelo, Andre, Hi, hello, good morning, everyone. Um, I will be sharing my screen. Please let me know if you can see it properly. Yeah, thank you, Alona. Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, thank you, uh, Alona and Ellie and Maital, for this wonderful opportunity to present and discuss our project. As Alona said, my name is Angelo. Um, I'm from Porto Polytechnic, and um, I've been given the opportunity to work with this uh, wonderful project with the most fantastic team. Uh, I will not take much time because my colleagues have far more interesting things to tell you. <laughs> And uh, every minute I save is one more minute for them to share with you all. But I would like to make just um, a brief uh, description of our project. Um, this is a capacity building project funded by the European Union, and it aims at equity, access to, and democratization of higher education. Uh, because I believe that, I mean, all democratic societies believe that higher education should be accessible to a larger number of uh, or numbers of the population and that this population should represent the national diversity of this country. So they, there should be a reasonable equal basis of access to higher education. When we discuss um, in the literature, what is access, what is it equity, what is democratization, what is inclusion? I mean, there's a lot of different definitions, but I'm sure we can all agree that an inclusion in education is something that is rooted deeply in every democratic principle of justice and equal opportunity. An inclusive higher education is, in our point of view, vital for the ongoing development of any society. Um, and at the heart of this inclusion, um, we hope that there is a cultivation of a mindset that can support the growth and respect for human differences. So how exactly do we measure this? How do we know if this um, higher education is inclusive uh, or not? Well, there is a lot of indicators. I'm sure you've all read about them and uh, every country has some sort of report about this. And uh, there are indicators about uh, policies and funding and procedures of enrollment and student background and nature of programs 
and international mobility and uh, socioeconomic status and so on and so on. Um, we wanted to take um, a step further, sorry. We wanted to take it a, a step further and um, we thought why not using, why not use ICT and e-learning to boost this democratization of higher education specifically in uh, marginalized populations and small groups of populations. Because I mean, after all, the emergence of online distance learning has uh, increased the access to higher education. And as well, distance learning has promoted significant shifts in teaching and learning. However, there are some challenges because we cannot simply pick up some technological resources and practices from Western universities and export them directly to other cultural contexts or other locations around the world. There are social and cultural issues that need to be addressed. And for this, we need um, a robust instructional design. We need a good cultural adaptability of learning materials, a culturally appropriate transformation of these courses. And this is why it is so important that we have partners in both of the countries that we are working with. In this case, Israel and Georgia, because no one knows the, the, the diversity of the population as the people living in those, in those countries. Well, perhaps the most challenging so is, to, is the need for this instructional design, the need for these designers to be sensitive for, and responsive to these cultural differences um, and understand this complexity of uh, um, instructional context to educate their students um, effectively. And sometimes this is even more challenging when we have different groups with different needs and we want to adapt to the same course. So you will see some of this uh, later on. So our project um, is um, um, the, the main aims and objective is to promote this inclusive education or, or at least we hope so through ICT and e-learning in both Israel and Georgia. And we hope to widen the access of higher education for potential or even existing students from any vulnerable group that has been identified like minorities, religious minorities, ethnic minorities, refugees, student workers, or even people living outside largest, uh, the large populated uh, areas. So the objectives of our um, project can be seen in our webpage, lovedistance.eu. Uh, and basically we want to help uh, build capacities in Israel and in Georgia to accommodate these effective distance learning programs, to develop curricular offers in both countries and to facilitate the accessibility to teaching and learning materials specifically for these target groups. We hope to coach faculty members and for them to coach their colleagues afterwards to implement uh, then quality assessments um, and also raise public, aware public awareness uh, to, this, uh, to these topics. And last but not least, facilitate the transfer of best practices to expand this access and successful completion of distance learning programs. So this can only be done with a, a good uh, network of partners. And here we have European partners and uh, both Israeli and um, Georgian partners from Europe for, in Portugal, Porto Polytechnic, uh, and also Funiver and Vigo University from Spain, and the Cluj Napoca Technical University from Romania. From Israel, the Inter University e Learning Center, so Metal, uh, Lewinsky College of Education, and Arno Academic College, and from Georgia. Uh, Ilia State, Batumi State, and Tel Aviv State Universities. So now my colleagues from each institution will share with you the work that we have been doing in the past year and a half, and you will see how deeply rooted this work is within each country and with each, within each community. So I hope you enjoy the session and that we can have a fruitful discussion and hopefully share some experiences. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. That was a great uh, introduction. Um, now we'll um, hear uh, Funiber 
uh, one of our um, dearest partners from uh, Barcelona, which will present yeah. their work related to emergent pedagogies in online learning. So Thomas, are you presenting? Yes, can you Good. hear me? Yes? yes, okay. I will share my screen. So uh, thanks, uh, Alona, thanks, Angelo, for the, the presentation. I will, uh, I'm, I'm Thomas Prola, I'm a researcher in education. Uh, Funiver is a organization, Spanish organization, and we are participating in the project as a, a leader of the Work Package 2, which is a work package uh, uh, related to uh, technological development. So I will um, talk about emergent pedagogy and uh, teaching competencies in online learning, some uh, contextual uh, elements, and uh, um, our first step or our first uh, development in this project related to a uh, love distance toolkit. So um, my colleagues from uh, the Faculty of Science uh, worked also on, uh, on this uh, document. So some uh, contextual elements. Technology in education is not new. Uh, we are uh, talking about technology since uh, a lot of uh, years uh, in, in education. Uh, for example, um, as I say, McLean and Berger, uh, the school is uh, also a technology of education. That's why uh, when we talk about technology, we have to thought about uh, this three point technology is also an ideology. Uh, with the technology is coming all uh, an ideology. Uh, ideology is a Trojan, a technology, sorry, is a Trojan horse. Uh, when we say Trojan horse, uh, ICTs come with uh, an ideology. Um, and we use, uh, um, we used to talk about persuasive technology. Uh, the technology uh, has, um, um, sometimes deforms the humanity and uh, the use of technology in education in the, is imposed for economic reasons sometimes. Uh, for example, in South America, we are working a lot in South America and they are developing a lot of state plans uh, in order to, imp to, to impose the, the technology. So another point, a new kind of learning is emerging on the web. Is it really a new kind of learning? And there is another uh, question, a uh, very interesting question, how people is learning with digital uh, technology? Um, we are observing uh, the development of technology in, in education and uh, some new uh, kind of learning related to the web and related to the technology. We are talking about smart learning. How is learning with digital technology? Smart learning uh, is a new paradigm uh, related to how people is learning. And we can say that uh, smart learning is highly uh, situated and authentic, adaptive and responsive. Learning centric uh, self and directed and empowering, highly personalized and customized to the individual, interactive and dynamic, seamless and highly contextual, collaborative, interdependent and highly social. Uh, these seven points related to smart learning uh, should um, give us some pathway for uh, implement, for develop a new kind of uh, education. So uh, in this uh, context, new pedagogy are emerging in, on the digital space. We are talking about emergent uh, pedagogy uh, from Spain, Ale and Castaneda, our, our colleague from Valencia uh, developed this concept. The um, we, emergent pedagogy are observed as new path for the pedagogical approach to digital technology. And we need, uh, and this is, I think, uh, an important um, work for our project. We need a methodology in order to systematize the use of ICT in, uh, in education. Um, our 
current challenge related to our project, uh, we have uh, two possibilities. Uh, ICT has, or, or consider the ICT as a technical tool. Uh, this is a traditional way to see technology in education uh, with a technical focus on education, with a learner which is passive and receive all information, and with a teacher uh, who use, uh, uses ICT to explain the knowledge as uh, we said, an explainer teacher. And for uh, another hand, we have, uh, I think, this possibility. Um, ICT as a pedagogical tool, a pedagogical focus on learning technology. And this is from Funiver and from our, our, our project. This is a very important uh, work that we are, we are developing. Um, Related to these two uh, uh, questions, smart learning environment, uh, with an emphasis on the students with customized uh, learning, who transform the information in knowledge, and uh, in another part, uh, consider the emergent technology. Um, and the teacher in this um, scenario is an actor of educational uh, transformation. Um, we usually say that the teacher lost uh, his importance since, since uh, new technology were developed, but we think in our project and in our, our pedagogical development, the use of ICT in education needs professional to recover as a pedagogical uh, expert. So in order to integrate ICT into the classroom, the teacher uh, should develop tutorial role based on three key aspects. The construction of the student's relationship with the technology, teaching how uh, to deal with the huge volume of information, which is a big problem uh, in, this, uh, in this historical moment, and work uh, on other ways to present and organize the information. We need to uh, technology uh, as a new educa educational paradigm is is an opportunity of uh, education for for all. This is a question, but I think is. <laughs> uh, that's why in uh, Love Distance we develop as a first step in our projects related to the work package one, uh, Love Distance toolkit and uh, defining domains of competence for the teachers. Um, pedagogical domain, the first domain, obviously, design and planning, technological and technical uh, domain of competence, social and communication, uh, co uh, contents, uh, when, I, when, when we say content is uh, how to uh, develop uh, content related to, uh, 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 for example, a topic, uh, management and inclusion, accessibility and diversity. So um, this is a list of competencies. Uh, this help us to organize uh, in last no November 2020, the first training of trainers divided in three main topics, uh, teaching in virtual learning environment, video recording for educational purposes, and finally creating of uh, virtual learning uh, environment, how to create. This, uh, this training was organized for teachers, but also for administrators in November 2020. Uh, this is our presentation, very short, but because we don't have any, any time, I think I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the eight minutes. Thanks for your attention. And uh, thanks, Alona and colleagues. And now I'm, I'm very happy to hear my colleagues to talk. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much. Um, uh, the training, of course, we all participated in and it really helped us with our pilots. So the next uh, presenter will be Ellie, which will present a short review of ICT skills needed for distance learning, emphasizing the needs of marginalized populations. Ellie, please. Yeah, thank you um, all for joining us. Um, at the conference, METAL conference. It's a long day with a lot of sessions, um, but we have a special place for this one. There's a, a large group of people that work together um, uh, to promote uh, learning technologies and, and 
and in our case, the um, uh, ICT report that we mentioned. I, I'd like to um, share with you some, um, some points that we uh, have results from the survey that we had. Um, and we learned just before that, I will say a few words and then we'll get into some details. Uh, but the uh, report itself will be published in our website and on the project website. So you can uh, um, go through that. We try to figure out uh, during the pandemic, it's actually during the pandemic, but it was parallel to the uh, project uh, uh, activities. We, are, we try to understand um, what the ICT challenge that students have. Um, in different institute. And we like to see uh, from the institute point of view and to make um, and try to understand how institute can support and help uh, students um, with some uh, gaps or um, uh, ICT challenges uh, and how they can help them. So before that, we understand that um, um, there is um, students in the uh, 21st century needs um, uh, digital literacy and skills, what we call the competencies, the digital competencies, and they need tools to um, uh, be part of the uh, courses or um, uh, go through them. And, and, and actually the content during the pandemic and, and, and before that, uh, some of the content and most of the content are online and they need some skills to uh, work and, and have the, their ability to uh, go through that. So we had a, a survey, as I said, and we tried to ask a few questions from the um, Institute point of view and to see how Institute, first, how the, what the gap that they think there is. And the other one is what kind of solution uh, that they have. Um, so, um, we ask them, um, we have a survey uh, that we uh, share with uh, some colleagues and there was uh, around 19 institutes that, uh, that um, answered this uh, um, survey. And we ask what are the difficulties and the, um, what do you think that online learning is it depends or reduce um, uh, uh, social gaps? And I think more, more than 52% or around 52% of the participants mentioned that they think um, it reduce, it's um, um, make the gap more, um, um, deepen the gap. And there is some challenge for, uh, um, there is lots of challenge for students um, um, that have, um, don't have any um, competences or digital skills. And we ask another questions about, um, about um, uh, if, uh, what, what about the content? If there is any access for the content that students uh, can um, have or, or share or use in a, in a better way. And, still, and again, there was um, uh, another um, issue that said that more than 26% that there is a big gap or di big difficulties for students to use that. Um, and I think the most uh, important issue that go out of this survey that there is uh, uh, difficulties with uh, the internet, internet accessibility. Uh, there is some people that don't have laptop in some cases, cameras, microphones, they have still, they still have some uh, uh, um, uh, difficulties with the com with the uh, equipment, and uh, there is some digital literacy skills and, uh, and 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 some self management learning that they don't have any um, um, ability for that. Um, we learn that there is um, still in some cases, and, it, and it's very relevant for this process for this project, that there is that, that there is some gaps. Uh, that related to the culture and the language in Israel, uh, for example, and some other um, places of building, I believe in the world that they have the same issue was um, here is the, the religions group or maybe Arabs that they have some uh, uh, cultural language and, and, and um, uh, difficulties. 
And this is uh, bring another uh, layer of uh, challenge for this uh, population. Uh, we ask uh, the partners for another, um, what are the solutions for them? Uh, and there's some good ideas about it. I think the most important output, um, the most important output uh, uh, from, the, um, uh, from that uh, survey is that we need to support those groups in a special group and uh, try to uh, have uh, um, unique content for them that they can uh, share, inform share their challenges and try to support them in a way that we will be, um, that we will be a kind of um, 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 support team for them uh, in the universities and in the, um, at the universities. And um, some other issue that we have from that, that it's um, in some cases to help them with, uh, uh, help them with some the tools and, 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 and technologies. And it's in other cases that there needs um, um, try to find those groups before they um, have um, large um, 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 challenge or complicated uh, with the courses and to try to help them before that. Uh, actually, to try to recognize them before they are uh, uh, part of the, before, sorry for that. Um, so the, the, that's, I think that's the output from this, um, um, this survey. We still, we will do two things about this survey and, and share it with you. We'll have, we'll, we'll summarize everything that we got in, in, in have this report. And the other thing is that we would like to see after a few months of activity in the, um, in, um, at the universities and during the pandemic to see if something changed and to see, have a follow-up survey and to see if we have any other results about it. Um, maybe the gap is uh, smaller. Maybe there is some courses that are like Ono and Levinsky will mention later that are actually support these groups and help them to have uh, um, a better solution or better um, uh, opportunity to um, bridge the gap that we are talking about. Um, so this is just the highlight from the sur survey that we have. And um, and I think this is for from our side for now. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eli. Thank you very much. And it's great to have you on board in this project. Uh, now we will uh, hear um, Ono Academic College. Um, the, um, they will present the learning support platform developed according to principles of equity and inclusion. And I would like to invite Sipi, who is the, uh, uh, at the heart of this project. And without her, this project wouldn't have been able to, uh, to be launched and my personal mentor, so Tipi, please. Thank you, Alona. Uh, look how luck works. We just met by chance. I sat next to her at lunchtime, and here we are. So never uh, let a moment skip your attention. Okay. Uh, I'd like to share the screen uh, for the presentation we have prepared on a the work and the thoughts we have at Ono Academic uh, College. I'd like to talk not about the courses that uh, we are preparing, but rather about a system we thought should accompany this, uh, these courses. We're developing three pilot courses and are going to develop the fourth as well. But uh, I think uh, one special thought is the students Learning, learning just spoils my three S uh, uh, initials, so I put learning in a parenthesis. A student support system. Uh, of course, there is a very large team working on it. It's not me. I'm even the maybe the smallest uh, player there. Uh, we have here Eyal Lifer. Eyal, can you wave, please? He's the heart uh, and the, the maybe the the. Uh, push of, of this, and we have Arya here, Arya Foran, also, and we have Judy here, Judy. Uh, she's also a part of, of the team, uh, and uh, many others, as, as you can see. So we work very uh, collaboratively together and put our heads into it. Now, the motivation was uh, what we learned from students 
especially from uh, students who have difficulties in studying, usually coming from uh, um, some having some gaps in their background regarding learning, etc. And uh, we heard that they had difficulties in organizing learning times in online learning. This was the starting of the Zoom era, and uh, there was a big riot and uh, and the dissatisfaction among students especially among students with um, the difficulties in learning. And they pinpointed uh, several things such as difficulties to organize, challenges to harness self-discipline and deficiency in student lecture communication. So we thought, why not have a system that will support students' learning? So the system should assist students in organizing learning tasks by time periods, what I should do today, what is recommended for next week. The system should provide a visual easy to comprehend dashboard so a student can just load this dashboard or, or it will pop up every time the student logs into the system, showing the student uh, uh, their achievements in learning progress what they have accomplished and what are the backlogs. So this and other things should motivate students to complete assignments on time. And finally, communicate the students' progress to the lecturers so lecturers can go back to the students and find out what are the reasons for the lagging, if there is any, or on the other hand, compliment students that are doing very well or improving, etc. So we uh, drafted a high level uh, requirements uh, document with the following principles underlying these requirements. First of all, flexibility. The system should not impose on the students, but let them schedule and reschedule assignments. Uh, it should not be rigid because we know rigid systems are annoying. Uh, the system should be customizable so they can even shut down the system's not notifications or not use it at, at all, uh, so it will be uh, friendly. Ease of use is a well-known construct of uh, intention to use, so the system should be easy, of, easy to use, self-explanatory, no training requirement at all. It should be generalizable. It should not fit a certain type of course. Uh, for example, there are courses that are very structured with uh, chapter one, chapter two, or topic one, topic two, topic three. Others are more flexible, maybe have two, three larger topics. Uh, some courses have strict tasks at the beginning, mid and end of a, of a topic. Some have maybe mid-term, so the system should be generalized, the generalizable and fit many uh, types of courses, as well as simply uh, integrate into most common LMSs. So it is not targeted into any certain learning management system. And finally, we want it to be free to use, open source, non-proprietary, free to all, but also programmable. So this really points to Moodle, but maybe not only. Uh, we are going to develop a, maybe a demo, a, a small demo on Moodle. Uh, we have um, a high level requirement. The one minute to go. That, yes, that uh, currently has about 12 re requirements, but the main ones are uh, the possibility to schedule assignments, customizability on behalf of students, a dashboard, and a backwards communication to the lecturer of students' achievement. And we also uh, had some graphical sketches. Uh, Eyal was responsible for this. Thank you very much, Eyal. Uh, for example, this is one option. Uh, some of us thought maybe it's a um, too de de detailed, so we had another one that's more graphical and less de 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 detailed, and we are still contemplating and arguing and thinking 
about what should be displayed and exactly how. So this was my last slide, Alona. Uh, and of course, we are open for suggestions. One of the ideas is to have students comment on the requirements and suggest, as well as uh, maybe staff members and you, of course, our uh, highly uh, appreciated colleagues in this project. Thank so you. Uh, if you want to comment, maybe in the discussion ses session, maybe later, thank you very much. Thank you, Sifi, that was really interesting. And now we will hear from Levinsky College of Education. Um, my colleagues will present the three pilot and three pilot courses designed and taught according to emerging pedagogical principles, emphasizing inclusion and equity on the Moodle Learning Management Platform. So please, Gali, Vinit, Sharon, you're most welcome. Um, Alona, I think Ganit will share the presentation. So okay. if you can make, yeah, great. Wonderful, thank you. So hello everyone. As Alona said, we'll present you the pilot courses at Levinsky. And as you can see, there are many contributors to these uh, uh, pilot courses. Um, I was invited as the head of the NETA, the Counseling and Support Center in our uh, college. My name is Ganit. I think I met some of you uh, last time. Uh, and in our uh, center, we deal with uh, students with various needs like uh, cognitive needs, uh, sensory disabilities, and special populations uh, like ethnic uh, minorities. And we will present you the needs of the students from special population in online courses. The challenges that uh, we are all talking about uh, in our pilot courses are based on analysis and, uh, of qualitative and quantitative data. And as you can see, <laughs> there are many challenges. Um, one of the challenges is lack of personal tie with the lecturer. When you don't see each other face to face, it is very difficult to uh, tie uh, personal ties. And it is very difficult to uh, tie social connections with other members of your classroom. Some of the students say that they have, there's a lack of resources for distance learning. For example, in a survey with 352 students, although most of them said that they have adequate resources for distance learning, 8% of them said that they don't have computer available for learning, as we heard uh, before, uh, you know, Ellie said it. 15% uh, of them said they don't have high quality internet. 33% of them said they don't have a quiet setting for learning. So it is quite a challenge for them. Difficult in self-management, it was mentioned before too, like uh, um, time management, or oh, wh wh where are my tasks? How to go into the model? Many difficulties in self-management, emotional difficulties, accessibility issues, how to go into the middle, to the model, uh, how to reach the lecturer, where is his email? Cultural differences, as Ellie uh, said before, there are religious uh, students, students with uh, different ethnic identity and so, and language barriers as a result of the different ethnic groups or sometimes even as a disability. So what do we do? Um, in our center, we um, use the two uh, guiding uh, principles. One of them is the Universal Design for Learners, UDL, as you all know it. Uh, and I think that the technology can um, empower the accessibility to everyone by uh, using technology in this uh, UDL uh, uh, principle. It has three basic principles. Provide multiple means of engagement, provide multiple means of representation, and provide multiple means of action and expression. And if you heard Bonk this uh, morning, he was talking about a uh, ask your students to produce, ask your students to engage. This is exactly the UDL um, uh, for learning. Another um, model that we really uh, think can help our students is the social emotional learning cell. I guess you all heard it because it is very uh, spoken this uh, uh, last year. Uh, in order to um, um, uh, 
advance educational equity, we have to create a nurturing, caring, and safe environment for our students. We have to uh, integrate cell skill building into academic instruction whenever possible. We have to communicate early, clearly, and often with all our students. We have to teach cell skills through explicit planned instruction. And we have to support students' confidence in their academic and emo emotional lives. Gali. Hi, so I'm going to continue. Uh, and taking all of these difficulties and all of these elements into account, as well as our own unique populations at Levinsky, how do we create online courses that are both effective, because we do want to teach something, we have academic standards, but also equitable. So following the needs assessment stage, the Erasmus Plus seminars and the Funibel workshop, thank you for that, we constructed one pre-pilot and three pilot courses at Levinsky using the Moodle platform and based on the principles that Ganit has just shown us of SEL and UDL. This is the pre-pilot course that you can see in front of you. It included 51 students of diverse backgrounds and needs. It was delivered both synchronously and asynchronously. It offered close personal support and a safe yet socially active environment and was centered around topics that were relevant to the students' developmental stage, they're mostly in their 20s, with colorful design and a strong element of choice. They had to choose four out of six topics. Each unit presented knowledge in diverse ways, including listening, watching, and reading. And assessment contained both speaking and writing. So under each icon, under each image, there were four activities, a video, a text, and a writing and speaking task. And various tools were used, uh, TEDED, Padlet, Kahoot, um, and, uh, and others. Uh, in the next course, this is a course taught by Vicky Cott, who's also with us. This is English for Academic Purposes. This one also put a lot of emphasis on motivation. She began with a motivational video synchronously shown and discussed with students to create a kind of safe and supportive environment. This course also put a strong emphasis on scaffolding and explicit teaching of strategies for academic proficiency combined with gamification, breakout rooms in every lesson. The teacher was also, Vicky was also highly accessible through various channels. The next uh, course uh, is an important course at Levinsky. This is Dr. Or Margalit's anti-racism course, which relies on the same principles of SEL and UDL, but this also has anti-racism and inclusion as its main topics. The central image, as you can see, emphasizes diversity and four languages are used, Hebrew, English, Russian and Arabic in accordance with the students enrolled in it. This course also offered close support. As you can see, these are the two lecturers or at the, at the top and um, his colleague at the, at the, at the, on, on the bottom. And they offered both academic and emotional support through a life-saving icon which the students can click on and receive help. The course was both synchronous and asynchronous using videos, creative group work, and a variety of assessment tools. The last course I would like to present is Rachel Hess Green's course in mathematics. This was designed especially for a unique group of 20 ultra-religious students most of whom are working mothers. Uh, so the course was both synchronous and asynchronous in order, in order to allow them for more flexible time management. It offered close support and a constant tracking of the student's learning process through personal contact and online interactive exercises and videos created by the lecturer. So finally, uh, based on our, on our experience, we would like to suggest the following key words when designing equitable online courses in order to promote learning 
and to decrease dropout numbers. A strong emphasis, I think, on a safe and supporting, supportive environment for all and a close tracking of students' needs and their learning process. Thank you very much. That's all from us. Thank you very much to Vinit and to Gali and to Sharon, who was in the background uh, preparing the presentation. Uh, so now we will hear the uh, Georgian side of uh, our project. And uh, we will begin uh, with uh, um, Yaakov Gorbashvili, Tel Aviv State University. Uh, we will just switch the uh, order. Um, Tamar, uh, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Yes, uh, I finally managed to enter. <laughs> it's uh, the advantage and disadvantage of online uh, approach <laughs> yes. because I'm at the same time on different face to face speaking, by the way. Really? But I meant, ah. yes, yeah, so the other colleagues are waiting for me. So I try to present what we've done. Uh, what we feel uh, uh, regarding the project. Uh, uh, can you give me the chance to share the screen? You can share, you can share the screen. So, good day. Uh, good day. Uh, I'm, um, for, for uh, those who don't know me, I'm Tamara Slanishvili, Head of International Relations Office of uh, Tel Aviv State University and represent the Institutional Coordinator and Manager of U-Funded Project Lab Distance. In today's presentation, I try to give you the overview of uh, students and lecturers' ICD skills and competencies in Georgia. On the case of three project partner Georgian universities, Ilya State, Badumi State and Tel Aviv State University. Okay, um, I will uh, give you what I'm going to talk about. I will introduce what are the state mechanisms to make the university to support the distance learning components, share the existing situation before pandemic and before our love distance project in the partner Georgian universities, talk about the aim of the survey and uh, that was conducted in the frame of love distance and share the survey analysis of all three universities and uh, offer you conclusions what we really um, uh, concluded and uh, saw after the analysis of the of our project uh, our, our survey one of the most important factors of the development of higher education is information and technology infrastructure with the use of information technologies age geographical and other social barriers in education can be virtually eliminated the recent pandemic illustrated well the necessity of enhanced ICD skills for both educators and students According to authorization standards for higher education institutions in Georgia, every university should have very well developed technological infrastructure and should provide sufficient service to students as well as teaching staff. So the institution should offer professional development courses to its academic and administrative staff that can be trainings, workshops and using different technologies both in teaching and learning processes. All higher education institutions have to go through the assessment procedure, procedures that examines the existing capacity of the institution regarding different criteria. And after that, the institution is gaining the right of functioning. All three universities represented in the consortium are, um, have a, a very many tools that support students and staff to get acquainted with the ICT skills uh, to master it. Here I combined all the um, uh, tools that so we universities are are using. These are uh, mandatory courses hard in the uh, existing curricula, techniques of academic course, information technologies. Uh, then uh, almost all are using learning management system. Ilya State is using argues and all the tools represented here um, are um, uh, all universities are familiar with the all this uh, stuff that is presented in this slide. And uh, moreover, the university administration offers trainings, uh, various trainings uh, that are elaborated in the frame of different uh, EU funded projects we already have uh, in the uh, funded by the EU Commission. These are DARE, Integrity, and Printel. With this reality, what you I've presented here, all the three universities met you funded uh, uh, lab distance project. One of the deliverable of the uh, LMS uh, F was finding out the students and the academic staff ICT competencies. The questions of the survey we are able elaborated together with partners 
groups uh, from Israeli and um, together with European partners and um, we distributed that questionnaires to students and staff to find out their skills in ICT in general. The report describes uh, the current practice of three Georgian higher education institutions regarding student ICT skills and competencies. All the data we are collected uh, in April and May 2020, and students had two weeks um, to fill out the form that was sent to them. Different number of students and staff became the respondents from different universities and due to the size of participant universities that was reasonable and acceptable for us. For example, from ICU, we had uh, 703 uh, response uh, from BCO3 uh, to 7 from TESAO to 112. The majority of students declare that uh, they have personal computers at home, but some percentage really uh, indicated that they don't have at least one computer at home. Being developing country, not all the families afford uh, to buy computers for their children, although some of the students are having part-time jobs during their studies and uh, their salary what they are getting is spent on their living expenses. We also asked about the accessibility to the internet to our respondents. And it's turned out that less than 20% of our respondents don't have internet access at home. This can be explained with two major reasons. Due to the geographical locations, not all the villages and peripheral places are equipped with the internet connection. Besides, families with lower income can't afford to pay the monthly fee for the internet. Unfortunately, these students are facing the problem that they can't attend the synchronous classes and only participate in unsynchronous activities by using friends' uh, houses with the internet connection. As the university is providing uh, Gmail accounts to all students, we ask them if they use them on a daily basis. And uh, as it's shown on the diagram below, most of the students started that stated that they use emails for communication. In addition to the email communication, they are able to use the Google Drive and Google Crust Classroom in the classes that require the usage of the following um, tool. Most students say that the university offers them courses to master using computer skills. Those who deny this, um, there is a small doubt that they have not studied the, these courses yet because all courses consist of obligatory IT, um, uh, ICT uh, uh, courses. So, um, so uh, due to pandemic, uh, so we, we decided so in order to access um, the existing situation regarding these competencies to explain the outcomes of student surveys, we also conducted a depth interview with faculty of administration staff members of our universities. Due to pandemic, the interviews we had done online in the beginning of September. And together with the faculty members, we tried to find out the major problems they are, uh, are facing regarding the usage of technology. And also we asked them to comment on students' ICT skills as well. The majority of faculty members stated that even though they had lower competencies in using technological solutions, they managed to transfer all classes into the virtual environment. From the ICT perspectives, uh, the easiest was to use video conferencing, conference tool to conduct synchronous activities. Some of the teachers find it difficult to identify the proper medium uh, for asynchronous activities, and um, the tool they chose depended on the activity itself. The biggest challenge um, teachers underlined during the interview is uh, the time spent on getting familiar with the tools and the necessity to find the right so solution for their activity. As they stated, due to the high risk of academic misconduct and cheating, they try to diversify the activities. Thus, they need to think of different ways and tools to make assessment components very uh, carefully. All teachers highlight the fact that not all the students are able to participate in the course activities, not because they don't have ICD um, competencies, but uh, because they have the problems with accessibility of the computers and the internet. They state that majority of the students found it easy to navigate through the different tools and activity participated in the activity, both synchronous and asynchronous. They believe that uh, this generation is digital natives, uh, so they have the basic skills of ICT. All three university management helps lecturers to overcome the challenges posed by online learning as much as possible. Training is conducted systematically and online instructors are placed for working remotely for both academic staff and students. So students, uh, uh, with the help of IT department and also with quality assurance services, 
for lecturers who don't have computer at home, for example, from Tel Aviv State University perspective, university provides them notebooks to, uh, for them for temporary use to uh, qualify the teaching process. Relevant services of the university try to manage to communicate with students of special population to provide administrative assistance with video conferences and individual consultations. So additionally to these activities, information uh, letters are published uh, and the hotline of uh, IT uh, is functioning very well. Of course, uh, there uh, we are many, uh, very many other interesting uh, questions and replies that I wanted to share with you, but uh, due to the time uh, limits, uh, it's impossible. So if you are interested in more details, we can share the detailed situation analysis upon to your demand. So to sum up the survey results, we can conclude that all three Georgia higher education and partner institutions uh, university students and staff have the appropriate ICT skills to face the new programs and software that uh, Lab Distance is introducing to them. So thank I try to be very uh, short. Uh, so thank you for your attention. If you have some questions, we are free to share the survey results. Thank, thank you. you so much, Tamal. That was really interesting. And sorry that there's not much time. But luckily, we're just before the lunch break, so we can we can have a few more minutes. So that's that's fine, right? So the next uh, presenter uh, will be um, we since we uh, sw switch the order, uh, Ilya State University um, and uh, Giga. Please, uh. the floor is yours. <coughs> Thank you, Alana. Good, good afternoon. Shalom. So it's my pleasure to be, to be here with you and share, share some, some perspective from Ilya State University. As you all know, Ilya State, so Ilya State University is a part of this project and uh, almost um, every activity has to be done locally at our university. But today what I want to share you is the uh, outcomes of the analysis of, um, of the students and lecturers' perception about the distance education, but with an eye on academic mi misconduct. So as Tamar mentioned, uh, we, we conducted this survey in all three Georgian partner institutions. And uh, yeah, so here, here I just listed some, some findings, uh, which we discussed previously as well. So the biggest problems in, in case of Georgian students and academic uh, staff was the accessibility to personal computers and even smartphones. So we faced uh, cases where in, in, in a family with uh, three or four children, they had only one computer or one smartphone and uh, the students or pupils had the classes at, uh, at the same time. So this causes problem in, in terms of att attendance. Also the poor internet connection, um, what was problem in the regions, because uh, the country is not covered that well with, with the internet connection. Uh, but some of, uh, some of our students from the target group, uh, I mean, the students from the ethnic minority groups or religious minority groups, they mentioned that they do not have enough space from preparing homework. This is uh, connected to the tradition of the Georgian families living three or two generations at the same House, so it means that students do not do not have enough space to be being alone and to, to prepare the classes. So, uh, as for the teachers, they they mentioned that the time for planning and designing online classes that takes a lot. Um, I mean, in, in terms of designing activities, assessments, uh, forms and criteria, and preparing educational resources, and also the lack of interaction during the online classes was uh, uh, named as a biggest challenge. But this, uh, I, I have to mention that the data was collected last year in April 2020, just the beginning of, uh, of the pandemic. So this is something that we need to take into account. Here, I just want to quickly show the uh, outcomes of, of, of the survey with one question, whether the student prefer online classes or not. And as you can see, in our case at Ilya State University, the majority of the students, 60%, they, they say that they do not prefer uh, online classes and they prefer face-to-face -face, uh, model. And also the next question, which was uh, interesting that, that, that the, uh, the question was online uh, teaching makes me feel 
satisfied. And as you can see, uh, again, the majority, almost 40% responded that they do not feel satisfied with this kind of method. I think that this was the biggest challenge for, for, for our case because after the pandemic, uh, um, not only the teaching on, uh, as not only the teaching was, con was uh, um, uh, designed in online way, but everything was converted to this way. And this causes, this caused uh, problems. I mean, uh, the, the, the new reality. Uh, but here I also listed the outcomes of the um, survey, not, not survey, but in-depth interviews with the academic staff. And as they, uh, as you can see, so they say that it's quite time consuming. So they need uh, much more time to search and choose, prepare the resources and activities, design the assessment forms and etc. Now, also, the majority of the academic staff um, uh, say, says that the cheating is the biggest problem uh, that they face uh, during the classes. So I, I, I really want to highlight this. So uh, after these surveys and analysis, the biggest, pro the, 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 the number one question what we got from, from this was how can we ensure students are doing the assessment or assignment by themselves? And how can we minimize the risk of uh, cheating in, in, in higher education? So um, this was something that I want to quickly highlight here. These are the cases that we faced at our institutions and not only at our institutions, but in the, in, in the countrywide, I would say that beside the plagiarism cases that we had before the pandemic, now we so the different types of academic misconduct and this can be the sharing information into social media groups and that is the number one in, in, in georgian reality also asking for support to another person we even met colleagues of ours who are teaching at the university and they were offered to pay by students to write the exam <laughs> so th that was something that is very uh, also, the making the screenshots of the questions um, during the exams and during the quizzes, and this um, this causes problems in terms of question banks. If those questions will be used for the for for for, for the next exam, uh, contract cheating is something that we had the cases of contract cheating before the pandemic, but now you can easily. Um, no, notice or the, the groups and this you know, person promoting themselves into the social media with the price lists even. Uh, so, and also uh, trying to avoid similarity detection in writing assignments. So, although the universities are subscribed to similarity detection softwares and they try to minimize the plagiarism cases in writing assignment, but still there are some, um, uh, I would say it's some YouTube guides uh, for students how to avoid plagiarism in, in, and how to avoid this similarity detection into that softwares. So what is the new reality uh, at, at our institutions? So uh, what did change the types of academic misconduct and the forms of detection um, and the, set, uh, the, the ways of preventing of these cases? What did not change is the code of ethics uh, mechanisms and procedures that are not that, that are still the same as they were before the pandemic and what shouldn't be changed is the quality of teaching and learning so this is the uh, reality that we are having now and uh, as for the final slide i would like to mention how can we minimize the risk of academic misconduct in in this situation so the the number one is to inform the students inform the students about the uh, mechanisms, tools that we actually have and that we can use in order to decrease that uh, number of the misconduct in, in, into this new reality. Also agree on the netiquette in advance before, even before the courses st start. So we need to explain our students how, how and we are trying to explain our students how to, how, how what is the assessment criteria, how will be they assessed and etc. Also diversify the assessment methods and you, even all the guides are saying this, that try to diversify the assessment method, do not use only one type of assessment. Also offer students uh, support services that, that, um, that, uh, that can help them to support them to prevent these misconduct cases. 
provide individual time timely feedback that that is crucially important and also use a different function of, of LMS depending on on, uh, on the what uh, LMS the institution is uh, using uh, to, to decrease the, the these numbers so um, I think that was all that I wanted to mention here. Um, thank you for your attention. Uh, as for this uh, survey, that is also uploaded into our project web website. If you would like to go in deep list, then you can find this uh, um, survey report uh, uploaded in, into the uh, project web page. So I I'm staying here to, to respond to your questions if you, if you might have them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Giga. And the last presentation will be uh, Batumi State University. Uh, Nino? Yes, sir. Thank you. The floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, once again, from very warm and very sunny Batumi. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure to be here with you, to see you all. Uh, it's a pity that we are still online, but we'll hope for the best that we will soon have the opportunity to have live sessions too. Uh, well, uh, for the next couple of, sorry, I will share the um, screen and please, uh, uh, can you please confirm that uh, you can see the screen? Yes, we see. It's okay. Well, thank you, Viga. Okay, so uh, for the next couple of minutes, I'll be talking about equity access and democratization policies in Georgia higher education. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, presenting, I'm talking, uh, so the presentation was prepared by Batumi Jotaro uh, uh, State University project team. But the, this is the, the joint report. Uh, so because the survey was uh, planned uh, uh, and carried out by all three of us, so uh, Ilya State University, Tel Aviv State University, and Batumi State University. So this is a kind of joint report. Um, yeah, well, and uh, all the, of, and for this, uh, I, I would like to thank you, Giga, thank you, Tamuna, for this comfortable cooperation. As for the official statistics, we got it from National Bureau of Statistics of Georgia, Minister of Education uh, and Science of Georgia, and National Center for Quality Enhancement. And of course, uh, so our results of our survey. Uh, well, now uh, very uh, uh, briefly, uh, general information, how our highs work. Uh, so first of all, types of higher education institutions in Georgia. So there are three types, universities, uh, which carry out studies on all three levels, BA, MA, and PhD, uh, technical teaching universities, um, which offer only BA and MA, and colleges, which offer only BA studies. Uh, as for the... Um, uh, for, for now, in total, there are 60 highs in Georgia, and from them, 80% are private and 20% are state. As for the location, mostly they are located in Tbilisi, in our capital, uh, and of course, a few, only a few are in big regional cities like Batumi, Kutaisi, Tel Aviv, Zubdivi, Gori, or uh, Well, tuition fee, it is fixed, uh, like 2,250 Georgian lives for state universities. It's approximately 650 euros, but it varies at private university. They have different fees. Uh, well, uh, after graduation, so um, uh, how student uh, starts uh, higher, uh, higher education. So after graduating from secondary schools, they need to pass the national exams. Uh, it is run by the Minister of Education. Um, and uh, there is also a possibility for students to get state scholarships uh, for the study and I'll be talking about uh, it a bit later in details. Uh, but of course, the number of scholarships are always limited. The academic year normally lasts for 30 weeks and, it's, uh, and students get 60 uh, credits in a year. BA studies last for uh, four years, MA for two years, and PH uh, from three to five years. Uh, well, in order to get authorization from the Ministry of Education, each university has to go through the authorization and program accreditation process, which is run by National Center of Quality Enhancement. Uh, the group of experts come to the university and they check um, uh, the capacity against the authorization standards. And it should be mentioned that in 
2017, we got new, uh, the new uh, standards were introduced to us and the majority of our universities got the authorization. Well, uh, now affordability and major forms of higher education uh, financing. Uh, well, so there is a rule of distribution of state education scholarships in Georgia, according to which study uh, funding is allocated for accredited BA certified native dentists with veterinarian educational programs. Uh, uh, amount is maximum 2,150. Uh, well, uh, also students enrolled as a result of the unified national examination can use the grant in uh, the conditions of the competition. It depends on the sports. Uh, uh, well, there is also an MA scholarship, the amount of which is uh, also a maximum amount 2,250. And uh, uh, its acquisition is conditioned by the unified MA exam competition. In Georgia, it is also possible to obtain a social scholarship, which can be obtained by a representative of socially vulnerable family and internally displaced person, person living at the border of a conflict region or in high, high mountains, mountainous region, a person from a family without a breadwinner. Of course, selection through is uh, through competition. Uh, well. Uh, besides, uh, any Georgian citizen can also obtain tuition funding with the help of the private sector. Azerbaijanians, Armenians, Ossetians, and Abkhazians, Ab Abkhazians can obtain funding on behalf of a representative of an ethnic minority as citizens of Georgia with a special quota of ethnic minorities. Uh, some private companies also provide scholarships to students coming from ethnic minority. For example, uh, Azerbaijanian gas corporations Soccer is providing the, the scholarships to students coming from Azerbaijan. Um, there are also priority education, uh, education programs in Georgia, and they are fully funded by the state. So they are like agrarian sciences, education, engineering, and humanities, and other interdisciplinary fields. Uh, as for annual quotas, uh, yes, and uh, no funding. Well, uh, so According to the funding system in Georgia, it is impossible to obtain uh, state funding for employed students uh, or according to religious minorities or religious ground uh, and uh, so students living away from the city. Uh, well, now accessibility. Uh, to what extent can citizens access higher education? So you Georgia- have here. one minute. Yes. One minute. Ah, okay. Okay, I will be. I will try to be very brief. Okay, uh, so they have the Georgian citizen who has the secondary school certificate has the right to become a student of Georgian uh, educational institution after overcoming school, uh, overcoming the barrier uh, which is uh, stated by a uh, center of unified national exams. Uh, okay, and ethnic minority for ethnic minority students, we have kind of one plus four program uh, for one year. They have intense of course of Georgian. Um, well, so this is statistics uh, due to these programs, how the numbers of enrolled non-Georgian language students by years is increased from 2010 to 647 and for 2019, uh, more than 100 and about 140, 1,400 students. Well, as for participation, we have here uh, statistics uh, who and how also of um, uh, people of citizens will incomplete secondary education. Here you have, for example, 24 uh, of respondents. So I'm talking about the minor, so it is related to ethnic minority groups. Uh, so, but also we have um, citizens with higher education degrees to BA, MA, and special master's diploma. Uh, well, as for um, the quality, National Center for Quality Enhancement, uh, so that ensures the quality of teaching and learning, and it is called kind of ex external quality, works like uh, external quality mechanism. And uh, of course, there are internal quality mechanisms on university and faculty level. As for um, ICT, so my, my colleagues and especially Tamar talked uh, that, um, about it, so I uh, won't uh, take much time. Uh, and 
we are really short in time. So I had um, our survey results, how it works and what kind of uh, situation we have in this Batumi, uh, Tel Aviv and uh, at Tbilisi. Uh, and uh, so, yes, that's all. So this is just uh, the summary <laughs> what I have already uh, talked. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Nina, thank you very much.